conversation about rebel yell unless you talk about fear, right? So let's just go there, shall we? <laughs> I mentioned I was writing a book earlier, but what I didn't say is that one day, after many days of chanting and writing and starting in the middle, uh, the universe made good on its promise and blam, delivered me the entire outline for my book, Soup to Nuts. And that was back in March. And I was walking on a beach down in the Outer Banks in North Carolina without a pen. So stupid, right? <laughs> I have been waiting so long for this moment. And here I was miles from my house with a pen. And I remember running back up the beach thinking I would make that guy to just really proud. I'm making a fool of myself, but I'm okay with that. And I ran to the house where my friend was staying and I flew up the stairs. And I started writing, and I wrote for hours. And like an aftershock, after an earthquake, for hours, I just kept getting a little bit more and a little bit more. And I kept writing it down until I was completely spent and overwhelmed, and I shut down my computer. And I didn't open it for six weeks. Now, if you're good with math, you can probably figure out that that lands us right about now. <laughs> so I didn't open it up because here's why, and I'm embarrassed even admit this, but I will. It turns out that the book that I'm meant to write about is about women and leadership. And when I found this out, I was so freaking pissed. Because if you could have picked one topic to lead me straight into the mouths of my dragons and my demons, that was the topic. And I remember wailing at the universe going, are you fucking shitting me? You could have picked any topic out there and you're picking women and Leadership? Seriously? And I stopped writing, probably out of a lame form of protest, but really ineffective, by the way, because it keeps talking. But I, it was really out of fear. And here comes the embarrassing part. Because you know what I was really afraid of? Katie Kirk. <laughs>
if the spring is about the liver. And if you think about it, it makes sense because think of all the cleansing and detoxing and purging and transitions that happen in the spring. So I concluded that my liver and I were going fisticuffs. And he's, I said to him, this is about control, isn't it? It's that damn letting go lesson that just keeps biting me in the ass and it's back again. And he smiled and he quoted Albert Einstein, because this is how he works, this is how he works. War is a complete loss of imagination. That's a good one, right, he said? And I was like, yeah, there's something there. And it just kind of landed with me. And then he went on to talk about the creative as he removed blocks that sent electric current through my body, returning my chi back to myself, and I could feel a flow. The creative, he said, is about saying yes to impulse. It's about, it's not about bringing things to fruition. It's about following the impulses as you have them with some form of a yes. Which means it's, we have to let go of our expectations of the fruition part and what that form will take. So this is about control. <laughs> and I laughed deeply in my belly and at that moment I gave over the wheel of control to my liver, my happy little liver. And I'm reminded of a trick that this uh, retreat leader from one of my homecoming retreats, Amy Badger, was teaching women, uh, she was giving us some new dance moves, and she taught us this trick called drop the penny. And she imagined, <laughs> here we go, John. She imagined, she said, pretend you're clenching a penny between your butt cheeks. And she put on music and she said, now move your hips, and we're all like, <laughs> Our final speaker of the evening, the amazing Josephina Gaspar.